My fellow Star Wars fans, we need to have a serious talk now. This isn't going to be my usual review style. I'm not going to do all the graphics and the trailer footage and all that kind of stuff because we need to be blunt and the focus needs to be on what I'm going to talk about. I love Star Wars. I've loved Star Wars since I was a toddler. I went and saw The Empire Strikes Back when I was three years old. That's right. 1980, I was in the theaters. That's how long I've been a fan of Star Wars. Not since the prequels or the new trilogy or whatever. I am lifelong diehard Star Wars fan. And many of you who are watching this are as well. We love Star Wars. We're the proud parents of an ugly baby. We love that kid, but deep down, we know that kid is ugly as f We don't talk about it, but we know. And if somebody was to actually tell us that our baby was ugly, we would be so quick to defend it. And that's how we are with Star Wars. That being said, I've been talking about the flaws that I've seen in the movies all the way back to Return of the Jedi when I was a kid. And that brings me to the new trilogy. Everyone is talking about how this makes the prequels look so much better. <laughs> no, it doesn't. The prequels were a mess. Yes, the story was somewhat cohesive, though it was definitely not made for kids. There was so much deep shit about politics and finance and everything else. No kid cares about that, all right? They just want to see space samurai fight with laser swords. The prequels were drawn out. They were dry. They had some of the worst dialogue that you will ever see in any sci-fi movie. And let's be honest, the original trilogy would have been the exact same. The original trilogy in the form that it was when George Lucas wrote it and he did his first cut and everything else were a disaster. They were a mess. But he had all of these amazing friends like Spielberg, Coppola, Kubrick, who all told him, hey man, this sucks. You really need to go back and recut this. You need to reshoot some of this stuff. This movie is a mess. It's boring, it doesn't make sense. He had help with that original trilogy. And that's why when the prequels came around and it was just him, he had full carte blanche to do whatever he wanted. It came out kind of a mess and he even admitted it in this behind the scenes footage when they did the first screening of it. I may have gone too far in a few places. So no, the original trilogy isn't perfect. It has its flaws, especially Return of the Jedi, but it is much better than the prequels. And as a whole, of course, it is better than the new trilogy. But nostalgia aside for the prequels, you can't tell me that they are great movies. Sure, the third one has some cool stuff, but it's a mess as well. But with all that preamble out of the way, it's time to talk about the rise of Skywalker. As you guys know, when I talk about movies, I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. That being said, let's get to the good. So I'm going to be talking about The Rise of Skywalker from three different perspectives, okay? A lifelong fan, a filmmaker, and a critic. And yes, it is possible to balance all three. I'm not using any notes. Normally when I go see a movie, I write down what I thought, you know, quick little bullet points, and I just kind of expound on them when I do the reviews. This one's going to be completely off the cuff and from the heart, and it's going to be quicker than my other ones. The movie looks fantastic. The cinematography, the lighting, the blocking, you know, you've got these really bright, fun, beautiful scenes like, you know, the Burning Man Festival. And then you have these other scenes that are very dark and scary and spooky and probably made little kids shit themselves when they watch this movie, like Emperor Palpatine's home planet. The cast of this trilogy, they've always had fantastic chemistry. They're all great actors, especially John Boyega and Oscar Isaacs. Even Daisy Ridley is great. Everybody involved is fantastic. The star of the show, of course, is Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. So the characters, the acting, the chemistry, it's all on point. Not only are the visuals great, the sound is fantastic. The sound in Star Wars has always been groundbreaking and it's no different in this movie. Now the music this time, John Williams, he's always fantastic, but he definitely was on cruise control for this film. But I think that speaks to the nature of the movie itself. And I know a lot of my fellow Star Wars fans are watching this right now. You're probably hitting that dislike button and putting comments about how I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about and the music is perfect. You guys are the problem. You guys are why George Lucas sold his damn franchise. He got tired of all of these people who are always up in his butt about what he was doing wrong and he needs to do more of this and less of that, etc, etc, etc. If you're that type of fan, you made George Lucas's life a living hell and he said enough of this, he sold his franchise for $4 billion and kind of just retired. But I digress, back to The Rise of Skywalker. There is a lot of stuff that happens in this movie that is amazing. A lot of the new characters are pretty cool. The guy who heads up the Empire, the people who used to be stormtroopers and now are rebels, and Zoe Bliss, the bounty hunter. These are all amazing characters. 
characters. Some of the action set pieces are pretty fantastic, especially, you know, that beginning scene with Kylo Ren, and then when he goes to the Emperor's planet, all of this stuff looks amazing. It has a definite atmosphere, and it really affects you while you're watching the movie. There were some really sad parts, some really funny parts. There was a lot to love about this movie. And it hits you so quickly with so much amazing new stuff, and new storylines, and characters, and all that. That is where the problems begin. That being said, let's talk about the bad. <laughs> This movie is a convoluted mess. You know, there are so many great things that happen and so many amazing new characters introduced and you don't get a chance to enjoy any of it because the movie is so rushed. They pack so much stuff into this movie and there's a lot of stuff that you really, if you take the time to think about it, even while I was watching movies, some things would happen. I was just sitting there like, wait, what? Why did that happen? How does that make any sense? This movie is all about the MacGuffin. You know what I'm saying? You've got... All of these things, they have to go here to find this thing, then go here to find this thing, and this thing will lead them to this. And everything just fits perfectly, and it doesn't make sense when, again, you think about it. Especially when you think about the timeline and when things would have had to be created, and why were they created for just this certain thing. Now, I'm not spoiling anything. This is all stuff that's in the trailer. Oh my god, this movie's so frustrating. It's fun. I had a blast. I watched it. I enjoyed it. But again, a lot of it doesn't make sense. Why does the Sith have to have a GPS to find this place? Why can't they use the dark side of the Force just to feel it? You've got 10,000 Star Destroyers with actual planet-killing capability now. You know, they were assembled underground, or did the Emperor just will them in existence? And since when is that part of the Force? I've never seen anybody in any of the movies or the books or the comics or the cartoons or the games will something to exist, something mechanical in nature. Everything has this, this gray area. So is this emperor a clone and he put himself through the force into the body? Did he survive the explosion and the crash of the Death Star? If you look at the original trilogy, the Death Star just friggin' evaporated, but here it is in giant chunks on the ground. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Then you have all these new characters. All of these characters were amazing, but they are so shallow. They don't get the depth that they need because everything is rushed. I wanted to see more with Zoe Bliss because she's an amazing character portrayed by an amazing actress, especially if you've seen the Americans. The ex-stormtroopers turned rebels. I wanted to know more about them. Why did they leave the Empire? Why did they change their mind? What are they doing now? Like all of this interesting stuff that they barely touched on. Don't even get me started about Rose. I never had a problem with Rose. She almost killed herself in the second movie to save Finn. And in this movie, because they are doing such fan service to the vocal minority, to the assholes on Twitter, they change so many things, you know, to make these idiots on Twitter happy that really they won't make happy. They'll just have more negative stuff to point out now. And they'll say, ha, look at what we did. We told them not to put this and we didn't like this and they should talk about this. And they did all of that. This movie caters to the negative fans so bad. And let's be honest. Nobody hates Star Wars like Star Wars fans, and this movie is a direct reflection of that. Then on top of that, the trilogy as a whole is a convoluted mess. I mean, let's be honest, you have The Force Awakens, which is kind of a rehash of A New Hope, and then you have The Last Jedi, which I actually thought was pretty great. Yes, there are some moments like Leia flying through space and all this kind of stuff that I wasn't a fan of, but at least Ryan Johnson tried to do something different, and of course, everybody tore him up about it at least he tried something interesting at least he tried to explore something different the new trilogy basically retcons everything about the last jedi to make these negative you know vocal minority fans happy and it does it in such a blatant way sometimes that i feel like jj abrams is sitting there looking at ryan johnson going like this or whatever this movie tries to be so safe it tries to do so many things at once and again, it's all the worse for it. I did have a good time. I'm not gonna sit here and talk about every single negative aspect because there are so many things that I could talk about. All I'm saying is I love Star Wars. I love all of the movies. They're all messed up in some way or another, even A New Hope. And the reason that is, is because every movie that followed kind of undid certain things that happened in the previous film. And that's no different in this case. Everything Vader and Luke and Han and Leia did in the original trilogy is negated by what happens in this movie. I just want to say that Star Wars needs to chill out. It needs to take a step back. Now they're doing good stuff with The Mandalorian because it is small in scale. 
you know, the characters matter. And they could have done that with this. You know, and I'm not going to get into the, the two different kisses that everybody's talking about that made them mad. Obviously, two of the main characters kissing and then some characters that were in the background. Because one, I didn't get to see them because I saw the movie in Doha, Qatar, and those damn kisses were censored. Self-moderation doesn't exist here when it comes to film. If they would have scaled this movie down and focused on those characters and brought them together instead of splitting them apart like they have for the whole trilogy, it could have been much more enjoyable. It could have been more cohesive. It could have been something that fans really care about. There are a lot of people who are passionate about this movie. I'm not indifferent. I did enjoy it and I liked a lot of the stuff that it tried to do, but I can't say that I love it, that I adore it. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So with all that being said, what is my score? Drum roll, please. Five out of ten.